Hey guys, and welcome to an intro to the Linux Terminal Part 4. I know this is long awaited and I wish that I'd been making it earlier, but I thought I would just go ahead and do it now. There's a site I found earlier today that's got a lot of the same information I've been presenting in this series, and it's really done in a, a well laid out manner, so I thought I would mention it while we're here. It's called linuxcommand.org, and from here you come in, click on Don't Worry, we'll show you what to do. And there we go, learning the Linux shell. Here's what's a shell, how to navigate, how you look around, a guided tour. A lot of these things I'm actually going to be talking about in upcoming videos. I just may not have gotten to them yet. But for today, we're actually going to be talking about I.O. redirection. This is a little bit of a, an awkward topic, but it is an extremely powerful one. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as we've looked at before, there are a load of commands you can do from the terminal. For example, if I typed in ls, it will actually list the directory that I'm inside of currently. pwd will actually show me what directory that's called. See, I'm in home test user. Don't ask about the test user. I was having issues with Record My Desktop, and this has helped take care of it, at least temporarily. Now one cool thing you can do, if you've got a really long command, and let's just say ls-al, because that's going to give me a list of all the files in the current directory in a long list format. See that was longer than the screen is. And you can imagine that there are some commands that will go on for pages and pages and pages. Well if you wanted to be able to see all of these at a glance, now let's assume I didn't want this entire page of stuff, I just wanted a list of the files themselves, we can do the same thing ls-a to see all the files. Now, like I said before, if there were pages and pages and pages of these, if there were hundreds of files, you wouldn't necessarily want to go through and look at all those. So what you can do is actually use the standard I.O. redirection out to a file. Now if I try this ls and then a right angle bracket like that, and then a file name, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to say listing.txt. There we go. We didn't actually see any output there. But if I do an ls again to see the contents of the directory, you'll see there's a new file called listing.txt. And if I use nano to go in and edit that file, you'll see that we've only got the three files in there. Oops, I forgot to put them all in there. Not a big deal, however. If I did the same thing again with an ls-a out to listing.txt, it's going to, again, not give me any output. But going into it, there we go. It's got the entire contents, including even the dot and the dot dot for this directory and up one directory. If I haven't talked about that, remind me, I will at some point. Uh, then you've got all of your hidden files that start with the dot, you've got all of everything in there. But what you'll notice is the original content you had in this document, what I just uh, put in there a minute ago, just the listing of ls, is not there anymore. That's because this right angle bracket, it's actually a destructive overwrite. It says, take whatever file I'm telling you to write this out to, wipe it clean and start from scratch. Now let's assume you don't want to do that every single time. So instead, if, if you've already got a file and you just want to append stuff to the end of it, we do it the same way, but ls-a, instead of one right angle bracket, we'll use two. So greater than, greater than, listing.txt. Again, we have no output, but if we go in and look at that file again, see we've got the normal stuff we had in it. If we go down to the bottom, there's our dot again and all of our content again. Now those right angle brackets, those actually can be used for just about any command out there. For example, if I wanted to say echo test to listing.txt, I should be able to go nano, there we go. That entire contents of the file was overwritten by me just echoing the test text. If I wanted to do it again, echo testing, but I used two of those right angle brackets, and I come back in and look at the file it created, there we go. It added this second line, testing, to my document. So basically what I'm saying here is, using the standard output, using the, uh, this is just sort of a redirect, you're taking the contents of whatever command you run and piping it out to something else. Let's go ahead and give a more practical example. Uh, and this is not something I would necessarily recommend doing, but it is definitely a possibility. There's a command called dmesg, D-M-E-S-G, and you'll see that went on for quite a while, but it went through very, very quickly, so I didn't get to see everything that was actually going on. Now if I wanted to be able to see all of this, I could do a dmesg and then pipe it out to dmesg.txt, or whatever other file name you want. See I got no output there, but if I go in and nano dmesg, there we go. This is every bit of it that it actually outputs, so I don't have to worry about uh, missing anything. I can go back and read it at my leisure. 
So hopefully you've got it at this point. That's basically the standard outputting to a file whatever command you're giving it, just giving you the result in a file. So that's pretty cool. Now let's talk about standard input. So instead of using the right angle bracket, you use the left angle bracket. And basically what you do at that point is you take some sort of input, be it a file, be it another command, be it whatever, and you run that into your first command. So for example, I've still got my listing out there. So if I go nano listing, I've got test and testing. Let me just go ahead and do an ls-a and pipe that out into listing just to give me a clean file to start from. There we go. And, and these files in here are already organized, sorted, but if I wanted to, I could type sort left angle bracket and then listing and that will take all of that and sort it. Now it was already in order so that really didn't help terribly much, but if I come in here and let's just take this frictional games out with control K and we'll stick it at the top. There we go. We'll take desktop and we'll put it at the bottom somewhere and we'll take this X session and put it in the middle. You know, we'll just put a couple of things out of order. Not a big deal. Now we'll run our sort again and we should see the same output we had just a second ago where everything is already sorted for us. Now it's not just the sort command that you can use it on. You can use it on whatever takes input. Now one really cool thing, and this is actually a way to combine these two commands, the input and the output, is if I took my file list, which was out of order. So if I go nano listing to look at the files again, you see I've got frictional games here and desktops at the bottom, all that fun stuff. If I wanted to take this unsorted list and sort it, I could do that using the sort command, just like I did before with the input of listing. But if I wanted to save the results, I could redirect that output out to another file. We'll say sorted dot text. And you see, I didn't see any output there, but if I go in and look at nano sorted dot text, we, here we have the sorted list of files. So that is one way you can sort of combine these things. And with that, it's probably about time to move on to the next item, which is pipes. And basically what pipes do, it allows you to take the output of a command, just like we were doing before, but instead of pushing it out to a file, you take that output and move it to another command. So for example, if I had a really long list like ls-al, there we go, it took more than the full screen. Now if I take that and put a pipe on the end, which is shift and the key above your enter key usually, it looks kind of like a long L longer than the line actually is, that's called a pipe. If I put that and then pipe it to another command like less, less will show you just one screen at a time. So there we go, we've got the first screen of it. If I had spacebar, we go to the next screen of it. And then Q to end. We can do the same thing with more. More works a lot in the same way as less anyway. In addition, you could say head on that, and that would take the first so many lines of it. In this case, it looks like it's 10 lines with head. That's fine. You could do the same thing with tail, just to take the last 10 lines of tail. That's fine. So if you wanted to use this with an actual command, you could use something like we looked at before, a D message, and then pipe that to tail. So you could only look at the last five messages. You don't have to have over and over and over again uh, lots of pages full of information you don't want to see. And of course the pipe command can be combined with that standard input and output we looked at earlier. So for example, if I did D message pipe tail, piping that D message out to tail, and then redirected the output to tail D message dot text, we see no output. Nano tail D message dot text gives me the last 10 lines of my D message in a text file that can very easily be pasted onto a forum or something to try to figure out what errors that I'm having. But that's basically about all I want to go into right now. Practice redirecting the output of a command into a file, taking the, the text that's in a file and pushing that into a command maybe. You can have a whole list of arguments that go into an, a, a program that way. And of course also try taking the text out of a command and piping that into something else. That's all for now though. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.